Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 3 talking about static testing and moving on to our next segment which is 3.2 Feedback and the Review Process. And as a part of this segment, we have many other segments and today we'll be talking about 3.2.1 Benefits of Early and Frequent Stakeholder Feedback, 3.2.2 The Review Process Itself, that is what are the activities and in that activity 3.2.3 that what are the standard roles and responsibility in the reviews of these stakeholders so let's quickly have a look on what exactly the review process is all about and why should be conducted how should be conducted and how does it make a difference to the overall process To kick off the discussion, of course, uh, the very first thing we are talking about early and frequent feedback from different stakeholders. And certainly the early and frequent feedback is coming back from Agile methodology and being blended together as a part of our general process as well. Early and frequent feedback certainly talks about that we are trying to test all the artifacts, all the work products as and when they are created. Say, for example, if I'm trying to write a requirement and then there was no discussion done on that, people just interpreted whatever they wanted to understand and they established the design based on the design. People started writing the code and then we come to the testing and have a different perception. We raised a concern. OK, not a defect, but just a concern that, OK, I don't think this is what we are asking for or this is not what the expectation is. Just having a contradiction you know, just ignited a discussion. And based on that discussion, we realized that there was an anomaly in the requirement. But the time to consumed here to go back to the requirement phase and identify that the requirement had anomaly took longer than if we could have joined hands together right at the requirement phase in order to understand the requirement had anomaly, right? And that's where we say early and frequent. That means early, that means as early as the document is being written, you start reviewing them and identify the anomalies in it. And second important thing is frequently. That means it's not a one-time activity. As in when you get a moment, you quickly do an informal or some kind of casual review. But do it in order to just find those missing dots, which could create a big problem tomorrow. Right. And that's what we have been doing in Agile. Also, if I talk about Agile, every single sprint, we sit down and do a discussion on each and every story before we take it take up them into the sprints and at the end of the sprint also we demonstrate it to the customer in order to get a confirmation from them so in that context let's have a look what exactly the benefits of these two things could be when it comes to our review process number one early and frequent feedback allows for the early communication of potential quality problems if there is little stakeholder involvement during the sdlc the product being developed might not meet the stakeholders original or current versions indeed that's one of the key points that at the end of the day all we are trying to make is a product which meets the customer desired expectations but if in case we miss out something that would be a useless product to the business altogether also to add here a failure to deliver what the stakeholder wants can result in costly rework missed deadlines blames uh, blame games and might even lead to complete project failure. No doubt at all, certainly if you do not meet the desired expectations of a customer or business, it certainly returns a negative feedback, indeed a complete failure of the project as well as the product will be rejected by the customer stating that this is not our expectation, right? Also to add here, the frequent stakeholder feedback throughout the SDLC can prevent misunderstandings about requirements and ensure that Changes to requirements are understood and implemented earlier. Now, right here, one thing we told you, what is the benefit of early and now frequent is consistent so that we keep getting them as and when it happens. Plus, when we talk about this helps the development team to improve their understanding of what they are building. It also allows them to focus on those features that deliver the most value to the stakeholder and that, the, that have the most positive impact on identifying risk. So prioritization is being discussed here. Of course, when we talk about today, uh, working on backlog refinement, we always try to prioritize those work items, which helps us to identify the risk areas 
much earlier in the life cycle and at the same time it we also look forward to what is most important for the business to see first and we try to work on those elements first those functions first and then deliver them so that they can also visualize and look forward to any further requirements whatsoever they have in order to blend them with the existing other features so put together the benefits of having early and frequent feedback certainly saves a lot of our time indeed in other terms it saves a lot of cost plus builds a better understanding of what you are making and at the end gives you a successful product so most important topic of the day is review process or this particular tutorial mainly is to talk about what is a formal review process all about and what exactly it takes to conduct the review process very very formally what are the different phases what are the different standard roles and responsibility however we can do them in different ways and we call them as different review types which we'll be talking on our next tutorial but here we are talking about how formally a review process can be conducted so what are those major activities let's quickly have a look so first of all the review process is very uh, different kind of them right we do get different types but here what we are talking about is a very formal review process which includes phases like planning review initiation individual review communication and analysis fixing and reporting so on a very nutshell way we do have different activities taking place here and different standard roles and responsibility which we'll be telling you in the next slide so let's get started and i'll blend the responsibilities and role right here so to kick off of course the very first thing we're talking about is the planning phase the planning phase of course uh, here the manager is a standard role which gets involved depending on the type of work product the manager may be different for example if you're talking about requirement review then the project manager will take the ownership of the manager. If I'm talking about a test plan review or test case review, then the test manager can also take the ownership of manager. So during the planning phase, of course, uh, the scope of review, which comprises the purpose, the work product to be reviewed, quality characters to be evaluated, areas to focus on, exit criteria, entry criteria, supporting information such as standards, effort, and time frame for the review shall be defined. So manager is someone here at this point of time responsible to define all these activity that is the scope the objective the type of document which type of review to be conducted how much time will be allocated in order to perform that and who all will be responsible to participate here because we just don't can't invite everyone because it's just generic no not at all we need someone who is really experienced in conducting reviews and participating and contributing in that so selecting the right set of people is also equally responsible when it comes to the planning all right moving on to the next one of course we have the next phase as review initiation which in other words is called as kickoff that means the start of the event here basically the moderator takes over the responsibility moderator is someone who is well trained on review process you do not get a designation in the company as moderator but someone in your organization maybe your project manager or technical lead or any senior engineer who is well trained on that can play the role of moderator so moderator basically during the review initiation the goal is to make sure that everyone and everything involved is prepared to start the review this includes making sure that every participant has access to the work product under review and understands their roles and responsibility and receives everything needed to perform the review process that means we just want to make sure that everything is in place and we are good to go and get started so distributing the documentation explaining them the objective of what is the review all about and answering any questions whatsoever they may have could also be a part of the review initiation let's look at the third one and here we have individual review now the participants means the reviewers whom you have shortlisted will be starting the review process here we will go through the documentation individually to find out their potential list of questions doubts and clarification so every reviewer performs an individual review to assess the quality of the work product under review and to identify anomalies recommendations and questions by applying one or more review techniques which we will be talking about like checklist based review or scenario based reviewing etc now the standard what we follow for this process is ISO IEC 20246 standard it provides more depth on different review techniques so if you are interested you can certainly look forward to gain more understanding about that but for the examination point of view you don't have to get into the standard discussion okay it's just for reference 
Also to add, the reviewer logs all their identifying anomalies, recommendations and questions so that it can be documented and brought to the people's discussion. So in simple words, this is an individual review where they find all their queries, uh, whatever they think they have uh, independently and bring this to the team when the review happens. Also, uh, when the next phase comes, that is communication and analysis. This phase is also referred to as review meeting which is inviting everyone, all the standard roles and responsibilities to be a part of this meeting. And every single reviewer starts presenting their list of findings, where author, someone who has written the document which is under review, should be responsible to address these questions and respond to them. If in case any questions remains open, we will document it. And that's where the scribe as a standard role will be someone who will be responsible to document it. So we will be documenting every single point stated by each and every reviewer and take that into consideration. Even after the review meeting gets over, the author will continue working or reworking on the open items and respond respectively back to each of the reviewer who you know, reported that particular issue. So in simple words, when it comes to communication and analysis, since the anomalies identified during the review are not necessarily defects, all these anomalies need to be analyzed and discussed. For every anomaly, the discussion uh, decision should be made on its status, ownership, and required action. This is typically done in a review meeting during which the participants also decide that the quality of level of reviewed work product is and what follow-up actions are required. A follow-up review may be required to complete the action. So that's not mandatory enough, but if you think there are critical items which you were you know, open during the review meeting, then certainly a follow-up review meeting may be required to discuss that and then close it. Last but not the least, of course, when it comes to the next phase, which is fixing and reporting. As I already told you, fixing is all about author starts working on all the open defects, which we could not resolve during the review meeting then and there, and then reporting them back to uh, the concerned reviewer who identified it. Also, the moderator will gather all the matrices to make sure that it is uh, successful or all the activities of the review has been completed and then meeting the exit criteria we close the review process so plus to add here for every defect a defect report should be created so that the corrective actions can be followed up once the exit criteria are reached the work product can be accepted the review results are reported so again when it comes to formal review process a lot of things have to be taken into account like making sure that every single documentation takes place and uh, a formal entry and exit criteria should be taken into account to make sure that it meets the desired you know guidelines and deadlines so in the continuation to our previous discussion of course we are giving you a separate page to talk about the standard rules and responsibilities of a review process so let's quickly have a look on them the reason is because we have already discussed what they will be doing throughout the process and where who is responsible but however giving them a one-line definition is not a harm so let's have a quickly look at what are these standard roles and how exactly their responsibilities are defined the very first role here is of course manager but reviews basically involves various stakeholders who may take on several roles the principal roles and the responsibilities include the number one is manager the person who decides what is to be reviewed and provides resources such as staff time for the review etc so manager is someone who plans did you know defines the cost time budget etc and uh, also someone who is responsible to monitor control and take decisions about the review at any point of time the second important role here is author of course author is someone who has written the document which is under review and will be responsible for fixing any kind of issues identified uh, during the work product review. The third thing is moderator. The third standard role is moderator, who is also known as facilitator as a synonym. This person ensures the effective running of the review meeting, including mediation. That means being a mediator between different points of uh, discussion or topic and uh, the time management, making sure that we are just not uh, extending the given timeline and a safe review environment in which everyone can speak freely. That means also moderating in terms of that everyone gets a chance to talk and respecting their inputs. So put together, this is one man army who is responsible to make sure that review goes successful. If anything goes wrong, certainly things may not be up to the mark and moderator should be held responsible for that. 
The third important role here is the scribe. A scribe is someone who is responsible to record all the details during the review meeting. Again, you don't hire a scribe in your organization, so you may not find someone dedicatedly called a scribe. So anyone in the team, like a junior test engineer or senior engineer, can be responsible to play the role of scribe during the review meeting. So here, of course, is also called as recorder, uh, someone who is responsible to collate all the anomalies from the reviewers and records <clears throat> review information, such as decisions and new anomalies found during the review meeting. So this is only in review meeting and not afterwards or before that. Okay, so the next one is, of course, the reviewers. So reviewer, again, anyone who is responsible to review the work product will be referred to as reviewer. They are responsible to perform the review. A reviewer may be someone working on the project, a subject matter expert, or any other stakeholder who is invited to review the work product. Now remember that people certainly have different roles like tester, designer, developer, and so on. But when they are in review, they will only be referred to as reviewers, okay? Not anything other than that. And the last but not the least, of course, we do have someone called as review leader also, uh, someone who takes the overall responsibility for the review such as deciding who will be involved and organizing when and where the review will take place. So this person is more on the logistic sites, taking sure, making sure that how the review will take place, when and where it will happen, whether do we have enough infrastructure to do that, because sometimes the number of reviewers could be high and uh, we just wanna make sure that everything is made available to them to conduct this event without any kind of you know, disturbance or any kind of uh, deviations. So put together, these are all the standard roles, what we have in a formal review process. However, when we talk about different types of review, then we certainly have different things to take into account. And they may be lightweight in terms of being conducted. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.